The Queen's Gathering set piece, everyone. An intimidating mess of sticky white stuff and spiders galore that may seem a bit inaccessible to any character that isn't actually the Spooter Boy Weber. However, taking advantage of it is way easier than you might think. Even if there's gonna be an insane amount of danger come dusk and nightfall around these parts, there are methods of madness for all out there. But where exactly can we actually find this collection of dens? Well, that is if your world even spawns with one. These circles of silk are primarily found in forest biomes. However, in truth, the set piece can actually spawn simply anywhere forest turf happens to be, so be very mindful of that. And for the most part, we're gonna be finding more or less 10 to 12 tier three dens per set piece. But if all we are finding are actually just spider dens, Beard, Things we may have already talked about for the most part. Why is this thing called the Queen's Gathering? Ah, good question there, friend. And here's the deal there. While spider dens do in fact only have three tiers of growth to them, a tier three nest will actually continue a timer for anywhere between 12 and a half to 25 days. And once that ends, the game will then look to spawn a spider queen from said very nest. All tier three nests have this potential. But note that the player also needs to be close by two said nests for roughly a minute or two after or before the timer ends in order for queens to begin to spawn. Now, with that, you can end up with queens to please every which way to Sunday. Hence, the queens gathering set piece. So then, how does one make the most of it? Or simply not even bother, perhaps? Well, I gotta be honest, I don't know why you wouldn't want to bother, considering the absolute pile of potential loot available to you. But, if you are an arachnophobe out there, I guess you could probably pull from your own life experiences, and then just burn everything down in your path when you see a spider. Then again, this is a video game, and we're a spider ourselves, so let's be way smarter than this. Cause yes, Weber players rejoice, as having one of these spawn in your worlds is like hitting the bloody jackpot. Base nearby, or heck, base in the bloody thing, and every dusk you can just simply feed some of the spiders some matzo meat, have them attack anything for you, including other spooter brethren, and then you can just sit back and watch the mob on mob massacre transpire. Making sure though, to pick up loot as it goes along as to not lose too much to them eating it. But then again, there's gonna be so many dang spiders, it's not even funny and I wouldn't worry about it. Plus, since spiders respawn in but a minute and a half, these wars could go on for quite some time anyways. But hey Beard, not all of us are Weber players, you know. Ah, but what if you could be friend? If just for a little while, that is. Cause here's the thing, everyone. Spider queens are technically bosses in this game. And because of that, they've got some unique mechanics slash drops to them. But first of all, when they do spawn, they're actually supposed to leave behind a tier 1 nest that will very rapidly grow into a tier 2 one in less than a minute. They won't do this, however, with more than 3 nests or queens nearby. So with this set piece, we're not going to see that much. Furthermore, not only do they spawn additional spiders every 20 seconds, they continue to do so in combat as well which can lead to them spawning warrior spiders over normal ones to boot. Now, as long as you run away and actually kill her minions before returning to her and kiting her, spider queens are pretty easy to kill for the most part. But about that being Weber thing, not only will queens drop a spider egg for players to plant even more dens themselves to continue the spider flow going, she also drops a spider hat and the spider hat allows non-Weber players to attract and temporarily befriend up to 10 spiders. And while we can't actually feed them meats like we can with Weber, we can still actually get them to fight anything we want to all the same, including other spiders. The hat is absolutely great for easy spider farming for those who are not Weber. However, 
Do note that it only lasts for two minutes and that spider queens will not be fooled by it. But before we briefly cover the loot, here are some other set piece clearing options for ya. Either have a, or switch to a Winona in order to construct a simple set of catapults nearby the dens, aggro some spiders at night then, run behind some walls, hopefully made with fossils and or end tables, and watch as the work gets done for you, pretty much. But again, the catapults destroy man-made walls, so you must use statues, fossils, and or end tables if you happen to go this route. Now let us not forget the old standby of leading a big bad to our troubles and having them do all of our business for us. I'd be careful though about using our fluffy pal Berger here as he too is going to eat the dropped loot. However, let us also note something very important about this set piece. These big bats are absolutely going to destroy many of these nests, but Tier 3 nests drop eggs for further den placements. So as long as you plan ahead, this set piece can kind of live on forever. But one last method would be the simple trap field. For you see, spiders caught under traps die instantly. So if you lead a bunch of them into a field of traps or simply just cover the set piece itself with traps, then you can just farm it for yourself with these at any time hassle free. Very nice, and so easy to do versus most of the other things mentioned here today, and accessible to all characters. But yes, the loot. Monster meat, spider glands, and silk. As for the monster meat, Weber players can obviously make the most of it. But for others who are not, dry it to make it last longer, use it in meat recipes like meatballs to save your other meat items for something else, just be sure not to use more than one monster meat in a crockpot of course, or just feed cooked variants of monster meat to a caged bird for eggs. Good stuff. Silk, on the other hand, is darn near invaluable, as it goes into fishing rods, bug nets, traps, umbrellas, better storage in the backpack, tents for easy heels, weapons even, winter clothing which is insanely important, top hats for magic access, sewing kits, character specific gear and crafts, you bloody name it. So make the most of it. And finally, spider glands and their connection to all things healing. Not only by their lonesome, mind you, but also with how they are needed for healing salves, telltale hearts, Wendy's healing potion, etc. Yup, spider loot is very flippin' good. So, it's a good thing that we talked about a set piece chock full of them now, ain't it? But, there you have it everyone, the Queen's Gathering set piece of Don't Starve Together. Now, this video went a little further into a guide territory than I would have thought, but I hope I did share something new about some of the Spider Queens and all their mechanics to some of you out there. But thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.